Okay, my name is Primrose, and I'm going to be talking about sex, y'all. Because <laughs> it's something that I do, it's something that I'd like to do when I'm fucking 60. <laughs> so hence, I'm not, I don't have any qualms about talking about it, or how to do it, or when to do it, or when it hinders me, or whatever. You know, I'm just, I'm just here to talk about sex. Hello, I'm Shubi, and I love sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also 35. <laughs> I'm Sibo and I'm open to this discussion. Hi, I'm Sandy, and I'm all for this sex talk thing. It's the only thing I know and love. <laughs> <laughs> it's an expression, you know what I mean? It's creative, it's beautiful. Hi, my name is Megan, and I really want to talk about sex. <laughs> it's the only reason why I'm here tonight. <laughs> I don't care about anything else, I just want to talk about sex. I need to talk about it. <laughs> I'm Astrid, and I'm here to talk about sex. But the more serious side is that mm -hmm. I've experienced losses um, from AIDS. My father died of AIDS, and um, sex is a beautiful thing, but we need to be responsible. And I'm here to talk about that. Everyone keeps on saying, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. But in reality, what is happening? That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear what you think should be and shouldn't be done. I want to hear what is being done now. I'm at a space right now where I'm not sure what's normal. So I'm hoping to, out of this conversation, find out, like, what's normal? Your world views about it, you know, things that influence your views around sex, your culture, your religion, your upbringing. So physical, when you come down to the nitty gritty, what is going on over there? Yeah. Yeah. We should start with your first sex experience ah. and then go from there. That's a nice way to start. Yeah, yeah. We all had our first sex experience. I didn't believe in love and romance. So I made a decision, a very conscious one, that I'm going to get rid of this, this thing, this virginity thing, because it was such a huge issue in the family. Like, you know, if you're a virgin, somehow you, you're more sort pure. of worthy or pure. Worthy, Jesus loves you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was like fucking painful. It was this like hectic thing that's coming into me, right? And I'm having, uh, like I'm bleeding at this point. Oh my, am I having my menstrual cycle? Or is this out of sex? Or is this like, I'm curious, right? And he's kind of like, okay. You're a woman now. I've made you a woman. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay. He was Scottish in a kilt. Oh, yes. Oh. And he played for the Caledonian Society Bagpipes Nochal. And he was very romantic with red hair. And that was my first time. And I ended up saying to him, is that all? This is the man I'm going to marry. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this man. So I'm like, do with me whatever the hell it is that you I wasn't even turned on. I didn't even know what you were going to be doing. So he's like, pants unzipped and everything down. And he's like, I just want to feel your warmth. So I'm like, okay. Give me a hug. Yeah. I'm like, okay, baby. And you feel this warm, big, huge thing. Like you said, it's like an invasion. It goes fucking jabbing right in you. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm a virgin and I'm... 23 years old now and Props it's you. changed it's changed my reasons have changed from when I was 13 or 12 and first learned about sex <laughs> to now when I'm 23 you know at first it was just like oh heck no <laughs> look at that no <laughs> you know it's just that kind of reaction and then moving into teenagehood where I was like validation where am I trying to get my validation from I didn't want it to come from having to depend on a guy making me feel good for me to feel good about myself. My dad was like, he never spoke about it like at all. Like it was something that didn't exist. Yeah. And then like one day he was just like, are you a virgin? I was like, what? When I was growing up, uh, there wasn't a thing like sex uh, in my family. It, sex didn't exist. I think it still doesn't. It's something that does not, it's not talked about at all. As, just as if it doesn't exist at all. In our culture, it's not easy for them to, take, to talk about sex to the younger people. I don't know why. I've got a son who's, who's 18 and who I know is probably having sex. And I speak very openly about it to him and his girlfriend. Um, I, I will put condoms in the room because I'm going to be living in fantasy land if I think he's not doing it. When I was growing up as well, my first period, my all my mother told me was, like, 
I went into the toilet and I told my mother I'm, I'm bleeding. So she says, she comes into the toilet, she brings me a pad and she tells me, you mustn't let the boys touch you over there. <laughs> That's all she told me. If your mother knows that there is eight, she will tell you that I know that there is eight outside there. But it's your choice to prevent it. But she won't give you how to prevent AIDS. She won't sit down with you and tell do this and this and this to prevent HIV and AIDS. It's really very frightening because we're almost pretending that our children are not having sex. And as much as it would freak the living hell out of you, and you're going to be excommunicated and you're going to go to hell, I'd much rather negotiate my deal with God than not tell my son about a condom. The Bible says sex is good. Sex is good in the context of marriage. And when you believe the word of God and you wait until marriage, when you have that first night sexual experience, what are you going to think? Sex is good. At 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, I, I mean, it depends on where you are, I suppose. You are not emotionally ready for this shit, let me tell you. I mean, a whole lot of things start happening to you. We as a society, we don't talk about sex. We can't talk about sex with our families. Mm, we don't talk about sad. sex. We talk about sex amongst ourselves. Mm. We talk about sex a lot. Women talk about sex all the time. Oh, yeah. And we talk about everything to do with sex. A friend of mine bought me a vibrator for my last birthday, which was, <laughs> <laughs> which, was which was great. I thought, like, my boyfriend was very unimpressed, I might say. He felt completely threatened. He never wanted me to touch it. But no, it's definitely. <laughs> I, I enjoy masturbation. Do I play? with myself? Yes, I do. Is that masturbating? Mm. If you say it, yes, or I, I don't know. I, I love my boobs. I love mm. everything about myself. So I play with myself, of course, yes. Mm. Masturbating during sex as well for a woman is also fun. Oh, absolutely. You know, and it, it does a wonders for a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I used to never even realize that you could actually do it. And then like one day I just like, discovered this and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> It's absolutely taboo in uh, Islam. It really is taboo, masturbation. But, uh, c'est la vie, yeah. such is life. Mm. Well, I, I, was, I was single for a while and I went into a sex shop. My youngest daughter knows about it, she does. And I bought myself Why a not? toy because I... Why do I know about I, this? Because you don't, scratch in my, you don't scratch in my cupboard. Bianca do that. <laughs> <laughs> and she found it, okay? And yeah, but you know what? I actually would like to do that with my male partner. I would like to, but I don't know how to do it. They will think they can't pleasure me. And that's what it's all about. Insecurity with guys. It's, I, wish, I wish I can correct that. Why do they feel so insecure? Why? Are we saying that men are obsessed with their penises and if they can't get them up, well, it's the end of the world well, it's because it's their manhood. It takes a touch to have a man's penis stand up. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think the guys that have big egos have small penis because they like to say, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, I'll do this to you, I'll do that to you. <laughs> and then when it comes, you see a little table, you're like, what is this? <laughs> I've done biology. I mean, I've been to university. I like bio. I like Anat human anatomy and I've never seen them that small. I've never seen them picture that small. I've never seen them drawn that small. Is there something wrong? <laughs> I went out. I went. I said to him, I've got other con I've got better condoms. <laughs> we are close uh, we, might, we, we look uh, the hand oh, and the feet. If it is the hand it it is big. Yeah, you know. Mm. Mm. He's, he's got a it. big, he's got a big one. <laughs> if he's got a small hand, oh, no, oh, there's nothing. Mm. Oh, you're so big. Oh, oh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, don't, I just don't buy into oh, all that. You just feel like, like hello, you know, we've you know, evolved. Surely you know. we, you know, you know, higher than this sort of thing, you know. So we get to uh, the hotel room and you know, this, he starts and he goes and he starts going down on me. 
Oh, and it's like, oh God, please don't come up until I tell you to come up. Eventually I said, you know, I'm feeling so guilty. Come up and he starts to kiss me and whatever. And he gets undressed. Mm. And I am so aroused. And his body is beautiful. And then he takes off his trousers. And oh, there's this goodness. little itsy bitsy willy. It's not really about the size, whether it's big or small. It depends how you, how you use it. Like, like basically women can satisfy themselves with the with their own body basically um, but now if your penis is a bit smaller than my fingers <laughs> what's the point I have you around you know these they have this thing where they go out and they want to conquer you know and and that's what's what's in a man you know and that's what men men are like you know and that's why this Tarzan and Jane what connects the rape of children to the rape of 80-year-old women, for example, is male entitlement to women's bodies. It's not that we, we don't like men, it's just that the system under which we rule allows men to have unfettered or unchallenged access to women's bodies. Our men, in a sense, we can't actually blame them because they're only doing what they'd seen growing up. The man being the dominant person in, in the household, and sex is, is basically sex. If I want it, I get it. So, like, the two genders are taught by mothers, by fathers, by brothers and sisters and mates, etc., to have two different perspectives on sexuality. Women to be passive, to not be showing enjoyment of sexuality. It's all about version whore, you know? If they showed like they were enjoying sex, they would be called whores. So they have to be like the virgin and say, oh, I'm so, I'm so pious, I'm just lying and spreading my legs like a chicken, uh, so for you to get off. Women use sex as a weapon. Um, all kinds of women do this. If you want this, then I want this, and you want sex, so we're gonna, we're gonna do an exchange kind of thing. And I think that that's the power that women have. But I think women like to be dominated sometimes. They like that. I think they like somebody else taking charge because in other areas of their life, they have to be in control. So it's nice in a sexual relationship to just not have any say over control to mm. let someone else control you i mean it's a cliche to say women are controlled uh, in society by the fear of being raped for example you know and that's the type of of a way men exercise their s sexuality and their dominance to to disadvantage women i think rape is when uh, a, a man having sex with a woman without a woman's consent it doesn't have to be a violent act. All that it has to be is one of the two parties, and it can be male or female, mm -hmm. saying no. I have been told by a man that, well, that I basically raped him because he didn't, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, women say they don't want to have sex and everything, but yet they dress like they do. And you see, at the end of the day, we might say no, 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 but if we're going to show parts of our body that say yes, of course a man's going to believe that that's what we want. Buy, he bought you a drinks and gives you more drinks. No is no. So even if he's doing that, it's a rape because no, he knows that after, you, after the drinks, what will happen? As quick as I got into the marriage, I, I left because I was physically abused and I was forced, he always forced himself onto me. And I wasn't prepared to, to carry on like that. Yeah, I said no and then I slept on the couch and the next minute I knew, um, he was all over me and I remember kicking him in his face off me and, and running out screaming for I, I was sexually molested as a child by my uncle in my grandmother's house. I'm the only person in my family that spoke out when I realized it was wrong. And even when I spoke out, I didn't know it was wrong. You know, it was something that so, so tell me, I, I got told afterwards, I, heard, I overheard aunties saying, well, I was quite a provocative child. So it irritates me when people come to us and say, have you heard about the rape of that little child? And isn't it awful? And what are we doing? And what are the police doing? But they do nothing when a father next door is accused of maybe not brutally raping the child, if I may, but not causing physical injury. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We have the gangsters here, yeah, more special in the black community. If you're not pretending man when you have sex with a gangster, I'm telling you. She's gonna ask you, what's up, bitch? Why are you not screaming? Why are you not doing? You're just a fuck-off person, man. Just do something, some action. 
I don't know how we're gonna do action, although we want you to think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like making it depressing. <laughs> If you are not feeling and just imagine you are screaming and your voice, you are hurting your throat and you are feeling nothing, nothing you are feeling nothing. It's very bad. <laughs> Every day you change me some screen, you see that? <laughs> so, you know what? The girls are the personal clever in the world now. I'm telling you, that one is not going to notice anything I'm telling you. But I will show you that I'm not enjoying it. I won't, I won't fake it. I think I'm... I can't do that. <laughs> I had an ex and um, he... he, he I, I, I've never faked, nor will I. Um, and uh, he, he said to me that all his, most of his girlfriends, you know, all of his girlfriends came, you know. And I said, well... How can you tell? You know, I said they've been faking it. Hello, you know. <laughs> he said no, they haven't because he can. He he knows because their nipples go hard or something when when they're just about to come. I think I think a huge percentage of women fake it. Mm. Um, a lot of times, just to get it over with. Everybody said that. I just love you inside of me. <laughs> Doesn't matter who. It, I just love you. I've never had it this way. Oh my God. <laughs> when you start to actually. Uh, think like a man you begin to enjoy sex more mm. because then you have the power you can choose Yes now today this way that way mm. and not feel guilty about it and a lot of it comes with guilt So I'm saying you should get better as you get older and so at the moment I'm very proud to say that uh, me and my husband the sex life is the best. Mm -hmm. I could come actually seven times um, <laughs> And, and my husband, every night, um, he always thinks that it's with some other woman because um, that is how I make him feel. Now we, we are becoming stronger. As women, we are becoming stronger. We, we can say what we want. Now the guys, you know, the guys are like babies. But I'm not going to put myself in a position because he wants yeah. a blowjob in the morning and I have to do it or else he'll sulk. The sulking bit is his problem, not mine. I've got a, a couple of like issues with guys who don't want to do oral sex because they think it goes all you know. And I'm like, do you think that I wake up in the morning and I want to suck your dick? To me, it's not that much a priority to get oral sex myself, but I love giving it. I absolutely love giving it. So it's just what I like. You know, oral sex, it's like the same. It's, it's like giving yourself to someone. It's being yeah. intimate with them. It's like, exactly. this, and it's as dangerous. It, it is dangerous. Like, yeah, like he can lie sure. there and I can just do it to him and it'll be like, he'll, he can just enjoy it. Why can't he just do the same for me? It smells bad. It tastes bad. It smells bad. You know, um, you know, everything. Yeah, so, so there is that. OK, I, I, I like doing it because I like to see them enjoy it, so it just, for me, it just kind of puzzled me, how, how, can, how can it not be the other way around? I do it because it, it's in the moment, and it might give you pleasure, so please, nigga, <laughs> find the clitoris, <laughs> do you know, <laughs> find the clit, because you got her. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, I've had sex with men, and I've had sex with lovely men. Beautiful, fantastic guys that feel exactly the same way as I do. Sex is a communication. You have to communicate if you want to have good sex. And the same problem exists between women. I mean, Cleon is my partner for four years now, and it's great. <laughs> After four years, I still get butterflies. Oh. And you know what? When she kisses me, I'm like, wow. What is happening mostly in the townships is that they are using sex for alcohol because you go to the shipping. If you are a girl, you have no money, but you look nice, and then you just sit there. The guys will come and buy you a drink. Then you get drunk and go and sleep with them. And those, those children are very small because they start at the age of 13 to hang around the sheep beans at night. At some stage with, with my guy friends, now my friends' friends, they have this thing. When we're sitting and chatting, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm fair to you know how many girls you've had, you know? They go, 
um, I've had maybe I've now it's 16 and you're like thinking what what's 16 you know and they tell you no I've I've broken 16 girls virginity I'm this person who likes sex I don't I don't want to lie for anything <laughs> I like sex very much but I would like to first I want my partner to feel the same way about me to not just do sex like like he's just doing sex for just now and then after that he he will forget about me or something but with us it's it's kind of difficult because we're all in tertiary or you in you working and a guy says they don't want to wear a condom and it's it's hard to say no because they can force themselves on you i've had an unfortunate experience of having a boyfriend who refused to wear a condom and um was also pretty promiscuous and believes that if he gets aids well so what your boyfriend will go please baby just once you know please i beg and then again it comes back to you do you love yourself to take that risk because it could be that second that you thought it wouldn't happen okay and you know and you says okay i'll take it out as soon as and you say okay no there you just have to shut down and think well i refu i refuse point blank to sleep with anybody without a condom but men of my age once again refuse point blank to use them they don't want to. They don't consider it necessary. They're not ever going to get AIDS. They're not being involved with people that have AIDS, and they're not interested in wearing condoms. I don't know how far you've gone along that road, but yeah, I mean, I've heard they won't. About, I'm too big to wear a condom. You don't get my size in a condom, and I say fine. And then that's it, you know. And I'm too small to have you then, you know. <laughs> it's like they always have the same excuses as well. Every single time I heard the same things about getting pregnant, so they always say they'll go out in the last minute. And AIDS, it's just like anything else, like driving drunk, it's never going to happen to me. It's, they don't even think about it. All men prefer not to use condoms. They just prefer not to use it. Because physically it's not the same. I mean, for them, even for me, it's just not the same. Some girls, they don't like to, have to use a condom because they want to get pregnant, you see? So that the man, he can sit down and take care of them, to, you see, and all that stuff. But a, a, a child, it's not a ring. You're not married when you have a child and all that stuff. But I don't believe that handing out condoms to teenage kids um, or to, to people that are not married, I don't believe that that's solving the problem. I don't necessarily believe that um, you know, it's, 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 it's a case of, you know, you wouldn't necessarily contract a sexually transmitted disease if you weren't having sex. Before we start a relationship, we don't talk about condom, we talk about love. And after love, we introduce condoms. If we can <coughs> include condom in our first conversation and first whatever dates, I think it will be better. I haven't really heard of a situation yeah. when a guy has refused to put on a condom. I haven't heard of, like a situation like that yet. If you know you've got AIDS and you, you actually are aware of your HIV status and you go out there and you have sex with somebody without a condom, you know, you're basically killing. You're killing people. It's murder. I had unprotected sex with somebody I didn't know from a bar of soap. He didn't come inside me, luckily for me. A week later, I discovered that he was HIV positive. And I spent the entire week after that drinking myself into oblivion. And he was a really sweet guy. He's a nice guy. He didn't tell me. Anyway, I got tested, and to cut a long story short, it, I was negative, fortunately for me. But what it did for me was, I mean, it, it's not a chance that I would take again because our own deputy president said he slept with a woman that's hiv positive and he said he wasn't hiv positive and he wasn't gonna get tested he just had a shower with protex so he's fine he had a shower after he had sex you know so what are we as a country supposed to believe when we hear things like that on national tv okay i did get well, trust well, tested and uh I'm very proud that I did it because at first I didn't know my, my status and I was scared well, I if that I've got a, HIV or not. 
I haven't been for, for a test because I'm afraid. I'm actually so scared because of choices that I've consciously made. Just in the spur of the moment, in that, that momentum, I am scared to go and have a test. I'm from the 60s, I'm afraid. <laughs> I've been involved in threesomes a couple of times, mm -hmm. um, but never with another female, always with two males and one you female. It is actually a very nice experience. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, but I do think that you have to be involved in an incredibly emotionally mature relationship to do that. I've, I've actually done it with, uh, with, with, with three men. So it's... Um, <laughs> Well, I liked it, of course. It's, it's good to have all the erections around me. It's, 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 it's on. <laughs> they're orgasm balls for ladies, okay? They're two balls, and you can pop them inside of you, okay? And it will help you tighten up. So it strengthens you up. So when your man goes inside, it's, a, it's really tight and hard for him to get in. It's the, the head. Yeah, you, you yes. just pinch it. Yeah, I only learned that lo I last that night. Lot. You pinch the head. Not, not pinch, but actually they say you can. They say yeah. you can actually pinch it quite hard. You just like, as he's just before he comes, and he won't come. While he's inside of you, you cradle his balls basically. So you hold it just a little bit because it's very uncomfortable for them. So they can't think of coming. So what they do is, baby, no, 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 no whatever. They'll pull out and you pinch. So it's a whole, it's a whole strategy. <laughs> What? I don't know what that is. No. I know up yours. <laughs> oh, I thought you said evil. I know. Oh, no, evil. No, I never. As well. Never. I thought you said evil. That is evil, Nana. No, I, I know a lot of people that like that. And that's why I can understand gay men. <laughs> They, say, it's they say it's wonderful. Anyway, men just they like say it's listen, awesome. Men just like it up your eyes because it's tighter. That's all. That's all now. I only tried it once and it was I horrible also. and painful and like, no. We tried everything. Mm -hmm. Marvin, what do you call those things? Mm -hmm. The lubricant. Yeah. And I don't know, it's always get out. No way. <laughs> it is so, so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta relax. <laughs> It's an exit, it's not an entry point, it's clearly an exit, I also think it carries a lot of disease and stuff. For me, I always thought it would be painful, but when I'm ready, I'm, you know, I'll be ready. And when I, when I did experience it, it was actually very, it was very, I was comfortable doing it and I enjoyed it. And Just some people have anal like, sex and they're like, well, I'm a virgin. Yeah, and to me, that's kind of like... Yeah, definitely. Ew. Are you, you know? To me, in, my, in the back of my mind, it's always been printed the AIDS actually came from anal sex, and I'm sure that I'm not wrong. But I would say, I would definitely say in South Africa, shame, I'm sorry, they, there's no change. There's, with, with learning about AIDS, with learning about sex, with learning about relationship. In the face of yeah. all the problems that we've got, HIV and all this, we, including me, we are having unprotected sex. If you say you have AIDS, everyone thinks that, okay, you are a whore, you've been sleeping around, you are dirty, you are wrong. They don't care about how did it come to you, because sometimes you don't sleep around. Maybe you sleep with that one person and then you get AIDS. Maybe you've been raped, maybe you got it in an accident, but no one asks you, where did you get it? They just assume that you've been sleeping around, you've got many boyfriends, so you're just useless. I think South Africa is in a position to say that we, we're vocal about AIDS, we're talking about AIDS, so why is it that the statistics are going so much higher every single day? It's patriarchal constructs. And when this happened, I don't know, long before my mother's time, but some guy somewhere constructed this bullshit about women. And if I find the bug, I'm gonna fuck him up. <laughs> <laughs> I 
always wanted more than the minimum life, and that frustrates me. Well, then get yourself up and another man that wants it all the time. I actually wondered if I felt, oh, how many do I need? Like five or so just to, <laughs> just to, to keep me satisfied. Fine, yes. yeah. I think shagging and making love are the same in terms that you both you you both orgasm. Driving along Chapman's Peak involved in sexual activity in a combi. Baby, let's not make love. Let's just have sex. Let's shag. Uh, that stage, you know, when, when you reach the climate, it was my first time I saw a show. <laughs> you can nurture me, we can have fantastic sex. If you can't nurture me, it'll just be shagging. They don't get a hot on because they come home and they're stressed. They're not eating properly, they're not exercising properly. It's hard, it's hard, because you'll crush his ego, shame, man. You poor man with that penis of yours. You know, maybe if I had a penis, I'd be crazy like you. They make it yeah. so dirty, and like, when they discuss it, they use like vulgar language, and like, with girls, yeah. it's just like gorgeous. I love to watch porn. I love to read porn, and I'm quite happy masturbating. It's always in the room. For me, it's not like that anymore on the table, in the garden, wherever. I don't like a quickie in the morning before you go to work. When I go through periods where I have a lot of sex, I'm stupid. I'm like living off my hormones and my head's in this total cloud and I'm in bliss. Mm. And I'm like, oh God. I've discovered the best reason for being a woman. And that's multiple orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Megan. I really want to talk about sex. <laughs> That's the only reason why I'm here tonight. <laughs> I don't care about anything else. I just want to talk about sex. I need to talk about it. <laughs> I'm Astrid and I'm here to talk about sex. But the more serious side is that mm -hmm. I've experienced losses um, from AIDS. My father died of AIDS. And um, sex is a beautiful thing. But we need to be responsible. And I'm here to talk about that. Everyone keeps on saying, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. But in reality, what is happening? That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear what you think should be and shouldn't be done. I want to hear what is being done now. I'm at a space right now where I'm not sure what's no pure. Worthy, Jesus loves you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was like fucking painful. It was this like hectic thing that's coming into me, right? And I'm having, uh, like, I'm bleeding at this point. Oh my, am I having my menstrual cycle? Or is this out of sex? Or is this like, I'm curious, right? And he's kind of like, okay, you're a woman now. I've made you a woman. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay. He was Scottish in a kilt. Oh, yes. Oh. And he played for the Caledonian Society, bagpipes, Nocha. And he was very romantic with red hair. And that was my first time. And I ended up saying to him, is that all? Okay, my name is Primrose and I'm going to be talking about sex, you all. Because <laughs> it's something that I do, it's something that I'd like to do when I'm fucking 60. <laughs> so hence I'm not, I don't have any qualms about talking about it, or how to do it, or when to do it, or when it hinders me, or whatever. You know, I'm just, I'm just here to talk about sex. Hello, I'm Shuby, and I love sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also 35. <laughs> I'm Sibo, and I'm open to this discussion. Hi, I'm Tandy, and I'm all for this sex talk thing. It's the only thing I know and love. <laughs> <laughs> it's an expression, you know what I mean? It's creative, it's beautiful. Normal. So I'm hoping to, out of this conversation, find out, like, what's normal? Your world views about it, you know, things that influence your views around sex, your culture, your religion, your upbringing. The physical, when you come down to the nitty gritty, what is going on over there? <laughs> yeah. I think we should start with your first sex experience ah. and then go from there. That's a nice way to start. Yeah, yeah. We all had our first sex experience. I didn't believe in love and romance. So I made a decision, a very conscious one, that I'm going to get rid of this this thing, this virginity thing, because it was such a huge issue in the family. Like, you know, if you're a virgin, somehow you, you're more sort Pure. of worthy. This is the man I'm going to marry. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this man. So I'm like, do with me whatever the hell it is that you I wasn't even turned on. I didn't even know what you were going to be doing. So he's like, pants unzipped and everything down. And he's like, I just want to feel your warmth. So I'm like, okay. Give me a hug. 
<laughs> I'm like, okay, baby. And you feel this warm, big, huge thing. Like you said, it's like an invasion. It goes fucking jabbing right in you. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm a virgin and I'm 23 years old now. And Props to it's, you. Changed, <laughs> it's changed. My reasons have changed from when I was 13 or 12 and first learned about sex <laughs> to now when I'm 23. You know, at first it was just like, oh, heck no. <laughs>